Hi, my name is Jefferson Chua. I'm a circuit design analysis engineer at Chipworks. I will be discussing a little bit about the Silicon Labs SI8422 Digital Isolator IC. For demonstration, I will be showing this isolator's block diagram and schematic circuits, as well as its layout images via the ICWorks browser software. The X-ray photograph of the SI8422 isolator shows two isolator dies this one and this one. Since both dies are identical, I will present only one of them. By the way, Chipworks completed the full circuit extraction and analysis of this digital isolator, so please let us know if you have questions about this device. So let's talk about what this chip does. Shown is a top metal layer photograph of the SI8422. Basically, these digital isolators are used for separating and protecting circuits from either high voltages or blocking DC currents from one section to the other. Now, there are several types of isolators out there, including inductive isolator and opto-isolator. For the SI8422, this digital isolator is using a capacitive isolation barrier technique. That is, the material between the capacitor plates forms the isolation barrier. Advantages of using this type of capacitive isolation barrier ICs are size efficiency and low power. So let's get on with the demonstration. I will be showing this isolator's top level diagram, which is what you're seeing right now, the circuit schematics with the corresponding layout images via the ICWorks browser software. The circuit topology consists of the transmitter, the receiver, an RF oscillator, and your power management unit or internal voltage generators. Both transmitter and receiver are connected to their respective capacitive isolation barrier. We will talk more about that later. For now, let's talk about the transmitter. The transmitter includes an input amplifier, a modulator circuit connected to the capacitive barrier. The concept is that since low frequency data cannot pass through the capacitive barrier, the input data signal is modulated by the RF carrier, in this case an RF oscillator, so the now modulated high frequency signal can pass through the capacitive barrier. So let's take an in-depth look at the modulator. Using the ICWorks browser software, I can do a cross probe and determine where the modulator is located on the layout of the die. In this case, the modulator is located on the upper middle portion of the die. Now let's take a look at the schematic circuit of the modulator. We can see that the low frequency data signal is generated by the current source is modulated by these two nodes. By the way, these two nodes, if you're, do a, if you're gonna do a cross probe, is actually generated by the RF oscillator. The low frequency data signal via the current source again is modulated by these two nodes coming from the RF oscillator. So after this, current is then converted to a voltage and the now modulated signal is converted to digital by these gates. Let's go to the receiver. The receiver consists of a demodulator circuit and a driver circuit. The demodulator circuit is actually connected to the capacitive barrier. And last but not the least, I wanted to show you another interesting component of this digital isolator, and that is the capacitive isolation barrier. The capacitive component is connected to both the transmitter and the receiver, respectively, and it is located in the middle portion of the die. Let's take a look at the different layers of this device. This is the substrate layer, this is the polysilicon layer, this is the metal one layer. As you can see, metal one forms the first plate of the 
capacitive isolation barrier. That's metal 3, metal 4, metal 5, and metal 6. And metal 6 forms the other plate of the capacitor. That ends my short presentation of the Silicon Labs SI8422 digital isolator. I hope you find this brief demonstration informative. If you need any more information on this device, or reverse engineering on any device of interest, or simply need more information on the IC Works software, please contact Shipworks today. Thank you very much.